Hello, everyone, and thank you very much for, for joining us today. Um, we're really excited to be speaking to all of you today. Um, this is the first webinar in, that we've done in a while that is really talking about something that we've built. Um, we've done a lot of just talking about Looker functionality, highlighting what uh, customers of ours have done, just generally people in the Looker community have done. Um, but today is is focused on an issue that we care a lot about, um, that we've been building some new functionality around, uh, and that we'll be demoing um, for the first time today. Um, so yeah, really excited to have you all, all here. Um, before we jump in, I just want to signpost a webinar on the same theme that we'll be doing in, in four weeks. Um, we've got uh, Kenny Ning joining us. Uh, many of you might know him. Uh, if you've read the blog post on our site, which has kind of been like by far the most popular we've ever put it out about how to fix your uh, Looker project structure, Kenny wrote that. And he's been working with us on some content uh, around like content development life cycles and how you uh, like where you save content in Looker when it's a work in progress how you structure your folder so that you can manage it properly, how you deprecate stuff over time as you know it's not being used. So he'll be joining us in four weeks to, to talk about um, like the ideal content development lifecycle in Looker, which um, we're really excited to be working again with him on some content. And uh, we've been back and forth with him on this topic the last couple of weeks. Um, he's got some really, really interesting like ideas and, and um, like workflows to share. Um, so we hope you'll join us for that. Um, you can sign up for all our webinars at spectacles.dev slash webinars. Um, so same place you signed up for this one, same place you can see all of our prior ones. Uh, those are all there. Um, I'm going to hand over to Josh in just a second. He's going to be taking the bulk of the uh, the kind of presenting today. Um, if this is the first time you're seeing either of us, uh, Josh and I are the two co-founders, uh, are two of the co-founders of Spectacles. Um, we have a ton of Looker experience, ton of DBT experience. This tool was really built out from, um, you know, our own work and our love of, of these tools and wanting to provide better workflows to developers. We've got, you know, 10 plus years uh, combined experience managing different Looker instances. Um, and so you're going to be in uh, in Josh's hands for the rest of today. Uh, but the last thing I'm going to highlight uh, as we go uh, is that we will be managing all the discussion and the Q&A around this webinar and all our webinars in Slack. And so I've just dropped a link um, in the chat uh, to both our Slack community and the specific channel that, that you can join us in. Um, head over there, uh, make sure to ask questions at the Q&A, ask them as the talk's going. Um, we will we'll grab them all at the end. Um, and Josh, some of you will have been here for this, uh, asked while we were waiting, what percentage of content in a given Looker instance you think typically hasn't been used uh, in the last 90 days? Um, so head over there and, and um, put your, your guess before he, real, he reveals the answer shortly. Um, so on that note, I'm going to hand over to Josh and I'll, I'll be back uh, later for the Q&A. Cool. Well, someone has just literally started jackhammering outside of my apartment. So we will test zooms noise canceling capabilities here to the max but if if at any point you can't hear me or you need me to i don't know move to a new neighborhood uh just let me know in chat and and we'll see if we can do something about it uh, i'll stick closer to the microphone or something like that so as dylan alluded to we're gonna it's be a pretty short webinar today mostly just want to focus on a demo of, of a new product that's coming out for spectacles but also just talk about why clean up content and what the process is like manually if you're not a Spectacles customer or uh, if you're just trying to understand how you might implement these processes first. Uh, but we'll, we'll kind of breeze through the first two sections, spend most of the time on demos, and then would love to get not only your questions, but your feedback about, um, uh, about what we built. Cool, so let's talk about cleaning up content in Looker. We talked about how Looker is this purely additive process. We talk about this at Spectacles a lot. In Looker, you're always committing new code, you're adding new dimensions, new views, you're adding new explorers, you're adding new dashboards, new reports, new schedules. It's just always building, building, building. And unless your team is very disciplined about also cleaning up things that are no longer being used or that have been upgraded to new versions, uh, you're going to end up with a Looker instance that's just out of control. And what does it mean for a Looker instance to be out of control? Here are a few symptoms. And you know, let me know if these are things that you are also facing on a day-to-day -day with your Looker instance. Number one, running the content validator takes forever. And it's a real pain to make any kind of changes to LookML because there are hundreds and hundreds of content validations from 
errors from pieces of content that you are not familiar with, like stuff in people's personal spaces or things that were made years and years ago. And it takes a long time to sort through all of that every time you make a change to LuckyMail. Number two, people complain about not being able to find things. They're not sure which version is it. Is it, is it this? Is this the weekly business review or is this the weekly business review? Because they have the same names, but different owners. People having trouble finding the right place quickly to get answers. Um, just general sluggishness in your Looker instance, particularly around loading dashboards, searching for dashboards, things that use Looker's internal database. And then another one just being like not having a clear point of contact for an important piece of content. So somebody wants to ask a question about a dashboard or a report that they're getting, but it's owned in Looker by a person who's no longer at the company. Who are they supposed to reach out to to get information on that? So these are some symptoms you might be experiencing if you need to clean up content in your Looker instance. Because all of these are basically effects of there being just too much cruft uh, in Looker. So if you were to go and try to implement a process to do this today, many of you may already have an existing process where you hire an intern <laughs> or uh, quarterly, you go through this process as a team. One of our customers has like a data quality audit that they do on a recurring basis. And so this is part of their data quality audit. But the process today is pretty tedious. Uh, Looker does have an unused content section, which is a nice first step, but it's got a couple limitations. Um, number one, you, you might see something that's unused and, and think that it's a good candidate for deletion, but you don't really know who's using that content. So you, you may have uh, had this experience before where you go to delete something only to find out that it was actually being used by the CEO every week and you know, they were supposed to be checking the updated one that your whole team worked for months to produce, but actually they've been checking this legacy one because it had this one metric in there that's not in the new one. They like to see that metric. So they, they've they been looking at it. And like it had two views, but they're like all from the CEO. Uh, so the unused content section doesn't really tell you who's, who's viewing the content. It also doesn't tell you, um, it excludes anything that's scheduled or public or embedded. Um, so it's not actually giving you the full picture of your Looker instance. It's just giving you a kind of more curated picture of things that it's confident, more confident you can delete. And even if you find things in that view that you want to delete, you have to go and notify, I mean, you don't have to, but it's probably good practice to notify the content owners and tell them we're deleting this dashboard and here's why, right? So you have to then draft a bunch of manual emails or you know, maybe you can script it out, but it's still pretty tedious. And then when people leave the company, you also have this problem of needing to offboard their content to someone else. Otherwise you run into the, the issue of, the content owner being ambiguous or no longer working at your company. And then the last one is a little bit of an optimization, but uh, as you delete things in Looker, they're not permanently deleted in that the rows in the application database are not deleted. They are soft deleted, they're trashed. So the nice thing about that is you can always restore something that you remove. The downside is as Looker instances grow and grow and grow, these things do start to clog up your application database. And so it is actually good practice to repeatedly empty the trash folder in Looker. The scary thing about that is it's just a button, empty trash. Uh, there's no real fine-grained controls over, well, I want to delete everything that's been in the trash for a long time, but I don't want to delete something that was just trashed yesterday because you might still need that, right? So it's really a workflow problem. Like the tools are there and you can do it, but it's tedious and nobody really wants to do this. And so what happens is people just skip this process, right? So at Spectacles, we have been working on an alternative to this that gives you a command center to be able to uh, see all the content across your instance, see what's being used, what's not being used, who's using it. And not only just to delete things outright, but to delete things with a workflow that allows the content owners to weigh in on the decision. And so I'm going to show you how that works today. Give me one second to switch my share over and I will walk you through how we've done it. All right, this is the new content management application in Spectacles. Um, and what you'll see here is a picture of our own internal instance. You see right at the top, there's some stats, particularly the percent unused. I will say for those of you who are drop, dropping like 70, 80% in chat, that's about what we've been seeing from most customers. So 
uh, 70 to 80 percent of dashboards and looks not getting queried in the last 90 days, which is is substantial. Our instance is quite small, but your instance might have thousands of dashboards and looks. Most many of our customers have upwards of three to five thousand pieces of content in their looker instance. And so we can see this really great overview of all the content. We can see we can link to it from Looker. We can see who the owners are. We can see if a owner is disabled or not in Looker. We can see the volume of queries over the last 90 days, which is nice even just to see what is the most popular content in my instance. You may not have a great handle on that. So just being able to see quickly, these are the dashboards that are getting lots of views is, is also useful. We can see if it's in a personal folder or not and the name of the folder. And then we show the top viewers. So this is getting back to that CEO problem, right? Little low usage, but high impact viewers might be a reason why you would not want to delete a piece of content. And so with this table, it's very easy to try to find content that is a good candidate for deletion. So I can see here, these pieces of content were disabled in Looker uh, and they have zero queries. So I might be able to just go ahead and delete these outright. But Spectacles, I can just full on delete them right away from Spectacles. Now, I will say this is a soft delete. We will not um, permanently delete these. You can always restore them from the trash and looker, but I could just do this now. Alternatively, I could schedule a deletion. And this is that workflow that I alluded to before. So what we will do when you schedule a deletion is 14 days from now, we will delete that content. But before we do it, we will send an email today to the content owner letting them know that the content is going to be deleted and we'll give them the opportunity to opt out of that uh, deletion. So let me show you how that looks with some, some content that I own. Find something that I own here. Take these looks, for example, and I'm going to schedule these to be deleted. And Spectacles will uh, send out an email to me and give me a second to pull that up. And that email is going to allow me to do one of two things. Uh, the first thing it'll allow me to do is to, as the content owner, uh, completely opt out of that scheduled deletion. Just don't delete this content. The other thing that we're really excited about that it will also allow you to do, and let me get this email up. The other thing that it will allow you to do is reply to this email to contact the Looker admin who scheduled this content for deletion. So we actually open up a communication channel between the person who wants to delete the content and the person who owns the content. So you can have a back and forth with someone who might respond to this email after you've scheduled a deletion and say, hey, uh, this is like a Black Friday dashboard. I only look at it once a year and the rest of the year goes unused, but it's really important. Like, let's keep it around. And you can have that kind of an interaction with them. Alternatively, they can just click this link and, and we'll, uh, we'll essentially lock that content in Spectacles so that it can't be deleted for 90 days and they can ensure that that content is, is safe. So if we go back to Spectacles, and we refresh here, We'll be able to find that as content. And you can see other ones like it here where they've been locked. And the signal to you is that the content owner has asked for this to not be deleted. Uh, but everything else you know, is planned to be deleted in 14 days. Um, and so the goal here with this tool is really to give people confidence to queue up deletion of like large amounts of content. Our ideal world is that you could go into our tool and choose 500 to 1,000 pieces of content and schedule them all for deletion and, and not have to worry about it. We hope that we've given you the right level of granularity and, and, and information about each piece of content to make that decision, and also the workflow to allow owners to weigh in on the, on, on the deletion itself. But we want to see these numbers get you know from like 70% down to 30% so that the data discoverability in your lookerants is better, the performance is better, um, and, and generally just your instance is tidier and easier to use. 
Uh, let's see if I missed anything. Okay. Let me talk about a couple of things that we don't have yet, but are, are planning to do. One is this, uh, ability to transfer ownership of content. So, uh, we we're working on a limitation in the Looker API right now that we hope to have resolved soon, but we want to also give the ability for you to choose content and transfer owner ownership of that content to someone else in Looker. Uh, again, being able to just quickly filter to all content owned by Jerry and select all of Jerry's content and, and transfer it. Um, the other thing we're working on is the ability to empty your trash from spectacles with a bit more control. So being able to see how much is uh, how many pieces of content are in your trash in Looker and be able to delete everything with a date threshold. So being able to say, delete everything in my trash that has been in the trash for more than six months or more than a year, whatever that might be, but giving you the control to confidently clean out your trash. Uh, so there's a couple of features that are, are coming down the pike. Uh, let me hop back over to my slides and we can talk about what to do if you want to try this out. So if you are a current Spectacles customer, uh, please just get in touch with us and we'd be happy to turn this on for you so you can start trying it out. It does require one additional elevated permission, which is we will need the ability to see system activity uh, because we will pull the query history from your instance. We'll basically save that on our side to build an elongated history longer than 90 days and uh, uh, basically allow you to uh, see what usage looks like. They'll allow us to see what usage looks like in your instance. Uh, if you are not a current Spectacles customer, we would be more than happy to roll this into your trial. So if you would like to schedule an onboarding call uh, and set up a trial, we can turn this on and you can test it out as part of your Spectacles trial. Uh, the easiest way to do that is probably going to be a just book through our website, but uh, my email is here as well. So feel free to email me directly uh, and, and we can get this set up and turned on for you. Okay, so we talked about cleaning up content in Looker and why it matters. We talked about why it's a pretty annoying and tedious process today and gave you a demo of what Spectacles is, how we hope Spectacles will improve that workflow for you. But let me pause now and we will switch over to Q&A. Um, if you joined late, we do our Q&A in our Slack instance and there should be a link in uh, in Zoom chat to join over there. And please feel free to ask any questions you have. I'm very happy to hear that there was zero jackhammering noise. <laughs> and so we'll hop over to Q&A now. Thanks everyone. Awesome. Uh, thanks, Josh. Uh, yeah, we've got a bunch of bunch of questions ready to go. Um, the first one from uh, one of the many Bens who we have uh, asking questions, Ben Thompson, says, um, we've talked about offboarding people's content just today. I wish Looker could run schedules content as a group rather than a user or, or as a programmatic user, the equivalent of a service account. Um, as you mentioned it, I, I assume there's no way to do this currently? Yeah. That would be nice. I don't know of a way to do that, but if anyone does, please please chime in. I mean, you could certainly, Ben, you could certainly have a user that is a service account and transfer ownership, like transfer ownership of all content or schedules to that user so that you can get delete users more easily. So I think there's nothing stopping you in real time if you wanted to. Um, to have that user and like have a process either automated or manual where you move it to like a fake user. There's nothing stopping you creating a service account user in Looker, like the equivalent of a service account user and doing that. You'll just run into some issues that like users will then lose the ability to edit those schedules and things like that. So there's like a trade off there between the kind of like end of the user's journey in Looker becoming easier for the admins versus some some tension in the in the short term probably. Um, but, but definitely groups isn't, isn't possible short of like having as a, an email address for a group that they all log in as, which for a variety of reasons is probably not, not ideal. Josh, I don't know if there's anything else you want to add there. Um, we then got a, a category of question, which was like, what do we mean by ownership, uh, here? Like is owner the same as creator? Like, how are we using it to train terms interchangeably? Um, Josh, I'll let you kind of lead off on that. 
Yeah, Looker doesn't make a very clear delineation. Right now, if you go and change the owner of a look, uh, it it actually modifies the metadata where it says the content was created by to show the new user. So if Dylan created a dashboard last month and then I modify it so that I'm the owner, it says that I actually created the dashboard last month. So Looker doesn't really, it's just creator, but it's somewhat fungible. Um, and we're hoping to use that as an important piece of metadata because realistically, when someone's looking at a dashboard, they're they're going to look at that and think that that's the person they should probably get in touch with if it's not working. Um, or maybe they just slack you guys. That's that's the other option, right? Uh, yeah. Um, perfect. Uh, next one uh, from Selena says, looks like we're able to change the date filter of 90 days. Is that right? Uh, yeah, right now we, we use a 90 day look back window, but um, we plan to support customizing that. It's just not something that's currently available. But for people who want would be more interested in 180 day look back or a year look back or something like that, we plan to support that. Uh, question from a different Ben, which says, when I white label Looker, we treated all Looker, uh, all looks and dashboards as code and stored all of our client facing looks and dashboards as markup and Git. Um, I assume that's a wildly different use case than this is intended for, is the question. Yeah, so certainly you could do that either with the LookML dashboard concept, or maybe you are have your own kind of serialization format. I'm not sure what was being stored in Git, but this would not apply to LookML dashboards, for example. Um, to delete a LookML dashboard, you, know, you have to go and delete it, delete the, the YAML file directly from your project. This is really more designed for user user defined dashboards and, and looks that your business users might be creating or your data team created a long time ago, that sort of thing. Uh, what I would say is that this will highlight the LookML dashboards. Like this will highlight all content that isn't being used. So you'll see it there. It just won't allow for the deletion of it right away. So if you are managing, let's say a hundred let's say more, let's say a thousand like version controlled piece of content and you want to know which ones should I remove and which ones shouldn't I, the tool will be effective for doing that. And you'll be able to see the different type of usage and how it's broken down and all that type of stuff. Um, it just won't, the, the deletion workflow won't be the same. You'll have to go in and do that yourself. Um, uh, one that I'll probably take, which is anything planned for stale orphaned look ML cleanup. Uh, yeah, that's literally the next thing um, we're going to uh, build. It's it's what I've spent most of my morning building today. Uh, it should be, um, uh, we've set an internal deadline uh, that we've communicated at least to one person. Hopefully by like the second week in November, we'll have something live uh, for in that area. Um, and the idea there will be that we'll be able to highlight to you uh, fields, so dimensions and measures that aren't being used views, joins, and explore. So we should be able to give you a list of things um, at those four levels that will tell you like, hey, you can go and delete these things. Um, initially, that'll probably be just diagnostic. Um, so it will uh, tell you what you can delete, but it won't delete it for you. And ultimately we're gonna take that to the point where you can kind of select things in the Spectacles UI and it'll open a pull request for you that removes those things for you. So we, cause we understand that like diagnostic Stuff still requires you going in and making all those changes, um, which will hopefully be be useful even in the short term for people. But ultimately, um, we want to to get the um, the uh, like more automated end to end. Um, Selena, I just seeing your question: Is there a time for estimate for when the LookML parameter cleanup might roll out? Assuming you're talking about the functionality we've just talked about, hopefully uh, in beta at least it'll be in in kind of. Uh, sometime in November, we expect. Um, question, uh, use, does that include all sources, API, embed, et cetera? That's from, from Aubrey. Yeah, so it wasn't really visible on our Looker instance because we don't, we're don't we not doing a lot of particularly complicated access of content, but there are columns that will appear if uh, content is being viewed from a schedule, or I should say by the schedule itself. Um, if it's being viewed from the API or if it's being viewed in an embedded context. So those will be also useful data points for you to understand low usage, but it's client facing, low usage, but it's 
we're hitting, you know, we're getting it from the API with this script that's then sending it out to hundreds of people, something like that. Um, we just hide the columns if they're they sum to zero. So not something we could show in the demo. Um, one uh, final one, at least so far. Um, is it a possibility to remove add personal folder dashboards from being shown in the result set? Yes, it is. So we have a column for in personal folder. Uh, so you could just change this to yes or no and get the, the resulting accordingly. Let me know if that answers your question or if it doesn't. Awesome. I think we've got one, uh, possibly one more question coming. I can see someone typing. Um, in the meantime, I just want to echo what Josh said earlier, um, that if you're an existing customer and you want to test this out, drop us a message. We'll book a call to get it all set up. Um, if you're not a customer, but this sounds like it would solve all of your problems and make your life way easier and, and make you the best employee at your company, um, equally get in touch. Uh, hit us up. We'd love to like turn this on as part of a trial, um, have you test it out um, and and kind of get your looker instances cleaned up. Um, we're seeing really, like as Josh said, 70 to 80% on most instances we're working with uh, have of content has not been used in the last 90 days. That from a discovery point of view can just make a world of difference for most of your users and looker and, and can just make their lives easier. It also makes your life easier as you're like making changes and content validation errors are showing up for content that might be unused from three years ago. Um, just cleaning this up has so like helps in so many different ways. It helps data discovery. It helps speed up looker processes. It reduces content validation errors. Um, so if you feel like people aren't using Looker because they don't know which piece of content to use or something like that, um, definitely get in touch and we'd, we'd love to, to help out there. And then additionally, if the kind of look ML cleanup side is something that's of interest, you know, you've got tons of explorers, tons of joins, tons of fields, and you think that that could be pared down quite a bit, um, get in touch as well, because we'll be onboarding beta customers for that in the in the coming months. Um, really, and uh, I think particularly acutely, if you have a project where like hitting the look ML, the validate look ML button takes closer to two minutes than it does 10 seconds. Um, reducing the amount of code you have will make a big difference there. And so we'd love to, to talk to you if that that's relevant to you. Um, one more question, uh, maybe two more coming, but is there a way to reset, clean up, adjust schedules uh, set by users without hampering their ability to adjust it? Um, not currently. We are thinking of tools that we can add around scheduling, uh, particularly the problem of the 9 a.m. schedule, bringing your instance to its knees uh, as everyone's schedules go out first thing Monday morning. Um, so let us know what you might like to see here. Uh, we th This is probably something we will focus on later on down the road after we tackle content and look and milk cleanup, but it's on our radar. We'd love to get your thoughts. Uh, and the final one is, can you put that in a, put the use case to your CEO post, please? I never remember these arguments uh, or point made to the one that, it, uh, if it exists already. Yeah, we're going to, I mean, this is really our first time talking publicly about this this feature. It's not, you'll notice it's not advertised on our website um, other than like this webinar. Um, so we'll be doing a ton of content over the coming weeks and months around this stuff. And, and Ben, we'll definitely get one out of like, hey, here's why, here's the case you should make to your senior VP or CEO um, for a tool like this or for cleaning up content. And like, here's all the ways that it will improve your Looker instance. So we'll definitely make sure that uh, sees the light of day uh, in the coming uh, months. And yeah, would highlight um, this webinar that we're doing with Kenny in four weeks. There's also going to be a um, like a complimentary blog post that is going with it. So that'll also be going up. But um, that plus a whole bunch of other content in this area will we'll be going live in the next next little bit. Josh, anything you want to add there? No, just yeah, just further plug this this next webinar. I think it's gonna be great. Like certainly deleting having a tool that can delete content is is important, but there's the whole life cycle of when is it in development, when is it not, how should it be maintained, what are the SLAs? when you deprecate it, all those questions about like having a tidy process for content and looker and Kenny's going to cover that really thoroughly. So 
I think this will be a great, great webinar. Add it to your calendar now and hope to see you there. Awesome. Well, um, appreciate all of you joining today. The uh, interaction we have with all of you is always great, but particularly to, today, the number of questions we've had uh, has been awesome. I'm uh, excited to see that this is resonating with you. Um, if it is of interest, uh, you know where to find us. Uh, come book a demo, book a chat, sign up for a 14-day free trial. Um, and we will be back uh, in a couple of weeks for that webinar. Um, and in the meantime, if you have any questions, you can also find us in Slack. So uh, have a great day, everyone. Josh, thank you very much for the demo. And uh, we'll see you all shortly. Thanks, everyone.